I'm Bev Vim, plant-based doc. I'm making some the best potato wedges with butternut wedges and some color. So, so far I've chopped up some potatoes. The way one slices a potato, you obviously rinse it, you leave the skin on, you slice it lengthwise, downwards, and then you place it flat, and then you slice another four quarters. It's easier when you place it flat on the chopping board. Do this. Potatoes are really good for you. They are high. They help release serotonin in your body. So if ever you're feeling down, make yourself some potatoes and see if there's a huge difference. You never know. I'm also doing a butternut. So I just take the funny bits of, of the end off. I've rinsed it, cleaned it. And a butternut, this round bit is always a nightmare to peel. So this is a great way to use the round bit at the very least. You also just chop it into sort of wedges, kind of like this size. Okay, and you put them on. This is baking paper, also known as parchment paper. Or you could put it on a silicone sheet. I find these work better on the baking paper rather than a silicone sheet. This is going to go into the oven at about 200 degrees Celsius, which is 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's spread these out. If you don't spread it out, then the bits where it's not on the parchment paper, the parchment paper burns. So sometimes I just switch on the oven and even if it's not at temperature, I just lob these in. It's not like it's a cake and nothing's gonna sort of flop. So I'm gonna pop these in the oven. So these are going in the oven for a total of about 45 minutes to one hour. But in about 30 minutes, I'm going to add some various veggies to the tray. These have been in the oven for about 30 minutes. So I'm going to scooch them all together because on the side of the tray, where they are not, I'm going to add some colorful vegetables because they're all going to go back into the oven. So I cut some carrot sticks putting those on. The carrot sticks probably won't cook too soft but they'll be a little bit al dente. Let's put those in the middle. And then we've got some beans. Just rinsed the beans and spread them out. And then I've got baby marrow. I'm just cutting them lengthwise into quarters. So you'll notice that I'm definitely not putting any oil onto all of this. It doesn't require, require oil before it goes in the oven. A heated fat is the thing you want to avoid more than anything. If you need to add oil to something, you add it afterwards if you are going to have oil. So you definitely don't need to add oil. And I'm going to just put two tomatoes just for a bit of red. Usually I put red peppers in here because I love the color of the red peppers, but I didn't get any from the shop today. By the way, they did have green peppers. But many years ago, I read that green peppers are actually not ripe. And that is why they often repeat on you. Apparently, the same applies to green olives. And sometimes when I used to eat green olives, I would feel digestive discomfort. So that's possibly the same. Okay, so this is going back into the oven. So it's been in for 30 minutes. So probably another 15, 20 minutes. While we are waiting for the veggies to ready themselves, I'm going to show you the sauces that we're going to have the choices of making. So into here, I blended a tomato, a few basil leaves, not many, probably about six or seven basil leaves, and two teaspoons of nutritional yeast, about a quarter of a teaspoon of my sattvic spice. You can use any kind of a spice or leave it out. It's got cumin, coriander, ginger, turmeric, a bit of salt. It's a total mix. And then I put about a teaspoon of Bragg's in there. And I blended it up. And that's what I have. So that's one of the options of what we can put on our potatoes. So it's completely oil-free. So that depends if you want to go the oil-free option. The other thing we can put on our potatoes is simple, plain, store-bought tomato sauce. 
always find one that's at least preservative free. Um, mostly you're going to find ones with sugar in, but this is a great option for that I give to the kids. And sometimes with me as well. Now and again I feel like having tomato sauce as I did when I was a child. And then the other option is to make an avocado dip, which is really, 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 really delicious. It's probably my favorite just to do an avocado dip. So I'm going to scoop out the avo into the bowl and mash it up. Take out any brown bits. Those never taste nice. Mash it up in the bowl. And some lemon squeezed in. Oh yes, I also put a teaspoon of lemon into that sauce, by the way. Well, in fact, no, it wasn't a teaspoon. It was half a lemon. Half a lemon. Okay, so let's remove the pips. And another pip there. And I'm going to put a little bit of salt. And a bit of suffolk. And let's smash that up. But of course, you are not going to be eating an avo if you are doing your utmost to reverse heart disease. Um, there are quite a few doctors who are saying that, and I would imagine, yes, to reverse heart disease, you're not going to eat fats of any kind. However, if you're not trying to reverse heart disease, to have avos, not a big problem. At least as long as you don't heat the fat. It's the same that goes with olive oil. Even though oils are not whole foods, they are extracted from olives. So you don't want to eat a lot of liquid oils, um, but you definitely don't want to heat your fat. I never heat nuts and seeds or avos or any oils. I just avoid doing that. Okay, so there's our avo. Nice yummy avo dip. So we've got our avo, we've got our basil and tomato sauce, we've got that tomato sauce. And then the other option is going to be to put a little bit of olive oil and a spice of some sort or probably my suffix spice will go on there. So those are my options of what I'm going to be putting so on. So there are vegetables out of the oven. More exciting than the veggies out of the oven. While I was waiting for the veggies to be done with me, of the book. <laughs> um, I heard a Birchall's cuckoo outside, which is a bird. And uh, I looked it up in my Robert's book. So that's a Birchall's cuckoo over there. I'm going to show it to you. On YouTube about the Birchall's cuckoo. It sound is exactly like um, water glug 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 glugging out of a bottle. So that's the Birchall's Kukul. I love birds. I teach my grandsons all about birds, which birds are which, and they love hearing them as well. Put my book back. This recipe, by the way, is on page 59 in this book, Organic Flexitarian. And today, it's the 30th of July, in the book there's either a reading or a recipe or some sort of a health quote. 30th of July, my the reading for the day or the quote is the person who says it cannot be done should not interrupt the person doing it and that's a chinese proverb i think i've also heard nelson mandela, mandela say that very often and that's happened many times in my life where people have doubted me and i just think no i'm just getting on with doing what i'm doing and there's the tray of veggies the butternut one eats with the skin on so i'm just going to put a few of these on my little board that's what I'm going to be eating and a few beans actually this cooked for more than an hour I do notice when I just make the butter and butternut and potato wedges only it only takes about 50 minutes but when I add other veg sort of 20 minutes in the moisture seems to then make everything take longer to cook I, I'm going to put olive oil on a few of them my olive oil I always put in a spray bottle so that I can just spray a few drops onto whatever. So those ones I've got olive oil on. This lot don't have. I'm going to put a little bit of suffix spice onto the one with olive oil. If you try to put spice onto these potatoes, they're quite slippery. 
Um, the spice will just fall off. It's kind of like air popped popcorn. Now, I would either put this all on a plate and eat it with a knife and fork and enjoy all the flavors and the various dips, although I would probably do usually oil, sapphic spice and the avo, or tomato if I feel like a childhood memory lane taste. And then sometimes I add crudités, I've chopped some celery. So you can use it as a finger dinner or eat it with a knife and fork, add a salad to it, add other veg to it. But it's kind of one meal just in one platter. So I'm going to taste this sauce because I've never made this sauce before. It's something new. The rest of the sauce I put in a jar which I'll put in the fridge for a salad dressing tomorrow. I do like that. Very nice. And even oil free. <laughs> it's going to be good. Mm. Let's try a bean. And carrot. And you can also drizzle a little bit of lemon onto your veg. Um, let's have a bit of tomato sauce. And Mm -hmm. Totally reminds me of my childhood. Some avid dip. So nice. Now with the butternut, the seeds are there. You eat the seeds, you eat the skin. Absolutely delicious. I always make extra butternut, always, so that I can chop it up and put it in my salad tomorrow. The potato wedges are okay the next day, but not wonderful. And um, so I don't usually make extra of that, but if they are extra, I'll eat them cold in a salad. All of these veggies, if there's extra, I'll put them in a salad. I mean, in a salad, or yeah, have it the next day. So this is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite recipes. It is, if you just make the potatoes in the oven, it is the quickest thing to do. Okay, I've made a whole lot of sauces and extra veggies. That takes a little bit of extra time. But potatoes really are a wonder food. They are such a malign food. Everybody thinks that potatoes are so bad for you. Well, not everybody. Whole food, plant-based people um, by now should know that potatoes are not bad for you. They're actually pretty good for you. But the general public would say that. And the reason is because they have a very high glycemic index. And... The test on the glycemic index was correct and incorrect because what they did was they took a potato, a whole potato, and they cooked it. And they took the inside of the potato and they fed it to the subject, the, the, the chap who was now going to get tested. And that's all they gave him. And of course, his blood sugar spiked up like crazy because it was pure starch, pure sugar. And then the next day, they would have given the same guy some deep fried potato chips. And of course, his blood sugars didn't spark up as high because the oil on the chips would have slowed down the release of the starch. So whenever you're going to eat potatoes, remember to leave the skin on, add some veggies with it, even if it's a bit of oil or avo, some other veg, to slow down the release of those sugars. And that applies to most starches. Um, as we all know that a baked potato is far better for you than deep fried chips. And that's where that baked potato got such a bad rap. Because it spiked the blood sugars. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy my dinner. It's an early supper tonight. And uh, have fun making your potato wedges. And uh, let me know what dips and the sauces you make for your potato and butternut wedges. There it is. Hmm, I don't know if you can see this. No, you can't see it properly, I don't think. Oh dear, let me come close. 